Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Jason Brown here with the BrownReport.com and creator of Power Trades University. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to open your first stock and options trading account. Be sure to watch the entire video. I'm going to walk you through all the questions and everything that you have to fill out to open your account. Just keep watching. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to open your online stock and options trading account with Charles Swab. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to swab.com. So go ahead and go to the swab.com website. We're gonna click right here on open an account. So down here we have a few options. We're not doing anything with estate planning. We're not doing anything with uh, retirement or Swab's intelligent portfolio or anything like that. So we're going to just ignore that and we're going to click brokerage account, which is what we're doing. We're trying to open an online brokerage account so that we can trade and manage our own money. Here, we're going to click individual account. All right. So they're going to ask you, do you trade three times per month? or more, click here to enroll in Swab Trading Services. So yes, this is what we want. We want an account where we're ideally gonna trade three times or more a month. Doesn't mean we have to, but that is the concept. They're looking for active traders, okay? Now, to complete this application, we're gonna need our social security number and our employer's name and address if applicable. Now, I'm gonna make up some of that information, obviously, because I'm not gonna put my social security number in online. Plus, I already have an account with Swab. So let's walk through it so that you know the questions that you'll be asked and how to answer them. So let's continue. Okay, so here, you wanna be a US permanent resident. Now, if you are outside of the US, uh, let's say you're in Canada, we have people in our program that are in Canada. We typically recommend open an account with tdwaterhouse.ca, which is the Canadian version of TD Ameritrade. There's also interactive brokers. If you are outside of the country and want access to trading in the US stock market, uh, we'll have to look at those in a different video. But for now, this is just for uh, those of you who live in the United States, okay? So uh, we're gonna be a trader and there's nothing for the referral code, at least not right now. Do you have a swap ID, login and password? So they're asking you this in case you already have a 401k with Charles Swab, or an IRA, individual retirement account or something like that with Charles Swab already. So if you do, then you will log in under that ID and you'll basically be opening a second account, a, a trader account. And so you'll have access to all your accounts in one place. But we're going to assume that you do not have a Swab account already. So we're gonna say, no, I am new to Swab. So first name, we're gonna put Whatever your name is, I'm gonna go with John. Middle name, we're gonna skip. Last name, we're gonna go Doe. And then we're gonna go John Doe at gmail.co, which is not a real uh, email address here. Come down here to social security number, that's usually a nine digit number. So we are gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's the deal. You obviously want to put your real social security number in there. When it comes to birthday, oh, and they probably recognize that this is not a real social. So let me make something up. Let's go 313, which is uh, an area code in Michigan. Uh, that's actually Detroit. 92. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's see if that works. Okay, that worked. Perfect. Now, birthday, we're just gonna put January 1st. We're gonna put the 1st of January 1st. And then you wanna make sure you're at least 18 years or older. So we're just gonna put 1953, just making that up. Do not send me any birthday presents on January 1st because that's not my birthday. All right, mother's mating name. We're gonna say Mrs. Doe. Uh, so we'll just say Doe, mother's maiden name is Doe. Now, of course, you want to put your real mother's maiden name there. Okay, once you're here, you're going to create a login ID and password and can only be changed after your account is open. So we're going to call ours uh, John Doe 123 password. We're going to call it John Doe 123 
again. And then that's a uh, John Doe. You know what? Let's go capital John Doe. One, two, three. You're going to be asked to select your security question. What hospital you were born in? We're going to call it Doe Hospital, <laughs> right? But pick something. Here's the thing. Pick something that only you would know. So what you what you don't want to do is, you, in my opinion, you don't want to pick something like what's your favorite book because if your best friend or somebody said, hey, what's your favorite book? And your best friend was a criminal. Now they have the secret password to uh, in here. So you want to pick something that, you know, somebody typically wouldn't ask you or if they ask you, uh, you would you would probably say, like, why, why are you asking me that? Like, whoa. Why would you ask me that? Does that make sense? So what is your father's middle name? Like if someone asked you that, that would trigger you to say, mm, why? You know, uh, so just something to think about. Anyway, let's move on. We're going to call it Doe Hospital. And the password, let's redo this. It must match. Okay, so now we'll go next. Uh, the login ID is not available. We'll just add an exclamation mark. Maybe there's already a John Doe one, two, three. So we'll just add an exclamation mark. Uh, the login ID does not contain a special character. Uh, okay. John Doe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So just pick something that is unique to you. Okay. All right, so now that we're in here, they're gonna ask for your legal address, cannot be a PO box, all right? So we're gonna say one, two, three, John Doe Lane. If you live in an apartment or something like that, please put that in this area. Now, we are going to use good old Detroit, Michigan, because that is where we are at. So just for illustration purposes, and then we'll use uh, 48234 as a zip code. Now, for your mobile number, you do want to, you typically want to put your mobile number in here. And here's why. If there's something important happening or strange happening with your trading account and you have real money in here, you want to be notified immediately. So you don't want, well, them calling your home and you're not at home or them calling your business and you're not at work. You want to put a number that they can actually reach you at. So we are going to put... And a number here. All right. And now, if your mailing address is different from your legal address, obviously check that check that box. Or if you've moved in the last six months, here's the thing: they're going to try to verify your address. They want to make sure that this isn't fraud. They want to make sure that uh, someone trying to launder money isn't trying to open an account. So there is a level of uh, scrutiny to try to make sure you are a real person. So let's go ahead and hit next. Okay, so when it comes to employment status, just tell the truth here. So if you are employed, pick employed. Most people I would imagine filling this out are gonna be employed. So if you're a homemaker or you know a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, you know, don't be afraid to pick homemaker. They just want to get an understanding of who you are, and it's also gonna also play into the questions they ask as far as your experience with trading in the stock market okay so i'm um, you're gonna say you're employed so let's just say business owner self-employed employer's name we're gonna say john doe enterprises okay just making that up uh we work on one two three doe enterprise lane just tell the truth put whatever it is accurate in there and you know try not to fabricate anything not like we're doing in this video right all right so these addresses and things do not exist now your annual income in nearest thousands go ahead and tell the truth let's just say the average person makes about fifty thousand dollars a year one two three if you're a college student you know just tell the truth your liquid net worth in nearest thousands now don't think too hard about this don't 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 go find out how much do i owe left on the house and okay what's the blue book value of the car it's really not that serious they just want to have an idea 
of who you are and, and what you're working with. Okay, so if you're in credit card debt and something like that, you can't put a negative liquid net worth, but you can put zero. Nothing to be embarrassed about, but uh, just kind of tell the truth. So let's just say you're, you know, between your 401k retirement account, maybe you own a car that's $20,000. Uh, it's paid for, let's just say you're worth 70,000. Okay. That's your liquid net worth. Go ahead and hit next. Are you affiliated with or employed by a stock exchange member firm or exchange or FINRA or a municipal securities broker dealer? They're basically just trying to ask you, uh, do you work there? Are you, uh, a member of a firm or an exchange or FINRA, which is the financial regulation overseer of, of, of financial things. Basically, they want to know, do you work there? Is your wife employed there? Uh, you know, do you, are you a municipal securities broker dealer? Meaning are you handling transactions for a state, a county, a government municipality? So you just want to say no, unless you actually do, you definitely want to disclose that you, you never want to, say uh, no if you really do and then they come to find out uh, something may happen where you actually make a ton of money in the stock market and you may make it fairly on your own but they come to find out that you possibly had some insider information you didn't disclose that on here and maybe you get uh, sent to jail for insider trading you say well I was an insider trading they may come back to this application and say well why did you lie on here and say uh, no, when you really were affiliated or employed or something like that. Whereas if you say yes, you can see they're going to ask you some different questions. Like, does your firm have an account authorization letter on file with Charles Schwab? Meaning, does your firm authorize its employees to be able to open individual accounts? And then are you a director or a shareholder or a policymaker of a publicly held company? Okay. So you're just going to want to answer that truthfully and honestly. But for us, uh, the answer is no. And then again, are we a director or shareholder or policymaker officer of a publicly held company? The answer is no. Doesn't count that you own a lawn care services or something like that. That's not a publicly held company. That's a privately held company. So let's go ahead and hit next. All right, now on this page, we're gonna provide some additional details about the account. Additional details means where are you getting the money from to invest? Are you gonna be investing your salary? Are you investing your social security benefits? Are you selling a real estate property or a business? And that's what you're going to use to fund your brokerage account. Are you going to borrow money from family or did someone pass away and you're gonna get inheritance or an insurance type of money? Did you win the lottery and now you wanna invest it? Did you, uh, are, are you a compulsive gambler and you like to take your gambling and then turn around trying to invest it in the stock market? Are you investing capital gains? That means maybe you have money that's already making money. Maybe you have some dividends that you're receiving and you're going to invest it. Is, is someone giving you money as a gift? Maybe you're 18 years old and for your birthday, you said, I don't want any video games. I don't want any clothes. I would like some money to start my first investment account. And so are they gifting you the money? So just check the uh, whatever is true here for you. Obviously, there's a other, but they're going to make you explain it. All right. So just stick to whatever here is true. Most people are going to take a portion of their salary and they're going to invest it into the stock market or they are going to get money as a gift again from parents, grandparents, something like that. Now, what is the purpose of this account. So are you investing for retirement? Are you investing of pooled assets, which means in about 10 of you and your friends got together and everybody put in a thousand dollars. And so you're investing of pooled assets. You guys all pooled your money together. Uh, are you investing for college for your kid? Are you investing for tax plan? A lot of this stuff is also going to be based on if they are going to call you and sell you additional products. Maybe they're going to ask you, do you have any, uh, ID, you know, they might want to check with you, make sure you know what you're doing. If you're investing for tax purposes or for college or say, Hey, did you know about some other program that we had that'll help you save money for college? The average person for what we're doing, we're going to be doing general investing, typically investing for growth, but just general 
stocks and options trading for growth. Let's go ahead and hit next. Select the optional features you would like to add. Now, this is where it gets interesting, okay? So everything up until this point is pretty much your personal information, how you're getting the money, and you know what are you gonna do with it, what kind of accounts you want. Now, when we get to this section, okay, this is default. You wanna trade about three times a month. You get complimentary access to the best tools and services. Now, we break down these tools uh, more inside the course. But let's talk about margin for a second. We typically don't recommend someone trading on margin. Margin allows you to borrow money against your brokerage account. So let's say you have $100,000 in your brokerage account. They may loan you another $100,000 to help you trade. Now, even though we don't typically teach or promote margin, I... For the sake of having all options available to you, I would leave this check. Now, if you are a person that does not have self-control or good money uh, managing habits, then I would uncheck that so that you do not have the ability to borrow money against your broker's account. But however, if you are uh, skilled, confident, you have the knowledge and more importantly, the discipline and know when it would be a smart time to borrow money. And you also have the discipline to close and get out of a trade and pay the broker back and then take your profit. That's called leverage. And so then I would check it. But again, if you're not that person, leave it unchecked. You can always call them back and say, hey, um, I would like to upgrade to a margin account. Now, this is going to be very important for what we teach and what we do over here at Power Trades University, which is option trading. OK, so this request is approval to trade options. Your option trading application will be reviewed. So this is key here. They have turned people down for options accounts, and I'll talk to you about why. But based on your trading experience, financial profile and other criteria, Options carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. Please read the characteristics and risk of standardized options at their link here. Now, if you've taken my course, Options Explained, you should be prepared to trade options. Also, if you are in the process of taking the Options Explained course, you're going to want to go ahead and check this anyway. If you are not looking to take a course on options, you just want to know how to trade stocks, how to read charts, then you might want to leave this unchecked or you may find that they may not approve you because they're going to ask some questions about your option trading experience. Down here, if you want to get some checks or a Visa debit card that's tied to your account, check that. Now, I recommend leaving that unchecked. And here's why. You do not want to use your brokerage account as if it's a bank account. You're not going to go grocery shopping with this thing. You're not going to pay for some movie tickets. When things get tough, you don't want to be using this to help you pay rent or anything like that. If you're in that situation, this is not for you. You, you need a, a bank account, maybe a payday loan or something, but you do not want to use your bank, your trading account as if it's a bank account. So in order to help you protect yourself, I would say do not check this button. You don't want checks. You don't want a Visa debit card unless you're doing some advanced stuff where uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to even talk about this because then people start thinking, oh, what if I want to do that? You can always do this later. But let's say you're opening a brokerage account that is a under an LLC or a business. And so you put money into that account to invest or trade. And as that account grows, maybe you also do something with real estate. So you use your stock market money and you can write a check from your brokerage account or use your brokerage debit card to also fund your real estate. So you're set up as a some type of investing corporation and then the stock market is one of the investments and you're able to also use that money to invest in real estate or something else. Then that is a, a kind of a real reason why you would you check this button and get some checks and get a Visa debit card. So I hope that makes sense to you. You're gonna wanna leave all this check. You wanna get all the information you can with relationship to 
any stocks that you're buying, your trading confirmations, any shareholder material, if you're buying physical stock, your tax forms at the end of the year, things like that. So you don't want to leave all that check. You don't want to say, well, I don't want them to email me. Yes, you do. You want to make sure you miss nothing with respect to your trading account and with respect to uh, any of the taxes, again, the dividends or shareholder information that's related to your account. Let's go ahead and hit next. Now, here we are. We're starting to ask you, what level trader are you? Okay, now for myself, I am a level three trader, but let's walk through uh, all the statuses. So level zero allows you to do covered calls. That means if you have stock, you can sell options against it. You can do buy rights, unwind, covered rollouts, which means you can roll out the expiration date. Uh, let's say you have a January option and you just want to roll it out to February. You can do stuff like that as long as you already have the stock because it's covered for as just an example, capital preservation, invest uh, income and then investment hedge. Now, when you come down here to level two, level two allows you to go long, meaning buy calls, buy puts, do straddles, long combination, straight, uh, long strategies, different things like that. Your objective, they say, is grow for speculation and income. So this is where most people are going to fall. We teach in the Options Explained course how to buy calls, buy puts. And so this is where most people are going to fall. Now, level two in our advanced options course, this is what's going to allow you to do spreads, iron condors, butterflies. Okay. This is some advanced stuff. Now, I believe most people should check this uh, level one, but if you are planning on taking the advanced options course and doing spreads, different things like that, then you're going to want to check level two so that you're already set up to do some of that stuff. But if you're not, do not come in here and try to be something you're not. Just go with level one, meaning you can buy calls, you can buy puts, and obviously you can buy stock. And then level three is going to be everything. Plus you can do uncovered calls, uncovered puts. Now, when you get down to this level, they're, they're scrutinizing your income, how much money you have, stuff like that. Typically to go uncovered, I think you need about 50 to $100,000 trading account minimum. I believe I've always had one. So you'll have to check what the current requirements are. But when you get down to this level, they want to know that you've been doing this for some years and you have the money to cover yourself. Because when you're selling uncovered calls or doing uncovered puts or you're going naked, you have the ability to have an unlimited amount of loss, right? So they don't approve you for level three very easily. So we're going to stick with level two for purposes of, in fact, no, we're going to go with level one just for purposes of this training, okay? Down here, tell us about your marital status. Status. If you're single, put that down. If you're married, if you're divorced, uh, they want to know that. Do not lie. So if you're single, put single. If you have any dependents, uh, if you have no kids, just put zero. Total net worth nearest thousands for your entire family. Again, if it's just you, it should be the same number from the other, the, the original page. Now, here's what starts to happen. If all of a sudden on that page, you said your net worth was 70,000 and then over here you say, oh, my net worth is 150,000. That's going to, uh, or 1.5 million, or let me take that off, 150,000. That's going to raise a red flag because over on the other page, you said your net worth was 70,000. Well, you come over here, you're single, no dependents. How did your net worth all of a sudden increase? Now, if you're married, that's different. You say, oh, total net worth is 150,000 because me and my wife combined, we both have, you know, 75,000 in their account. So this stuff has to make sense. Okay. So we're going to say single and we're going to stick with 70,000. If it doesn't make sense, it will flag your application and it should, because they're going to wonder, you know, what's going on here? Why isn't this information lining up or why is this person, uh, fabricating or making stuff up. Now your skill and knowledge level in buying stock. If you've taken my course or somebody's course, I would go with good or extensive. If you've just been watching some free videos or something like that, limited. If you haven't even watched free videos, you just heard you need an account. 
you're going to probably put none. Now, if you put none, it's very unlikely they're going to approve you for an options account. I'm just, I'm just telling you how it is very unlikely you'll get approved. So typically if you're at this stage, you're probably at least good number of years. If this is your first month or year starting to learn the stock market, you've been taking a course, just put one average trade per year. You want to say you do about two to three trades um, a month. So let's go on the lower end, two trades a month. So that's going to average out to 24 trades a year, 24, uh, two trades a month, 12 months in a year, 24 average size per trading account nearest thousand. The average person, you're probably going to be trading about 5,000 if you're just getting started. Now you, you've probably seen some of my trades where there are hundred thousand dollar trades. Do not come in here and put that. If your average trade size is not a hundred thousand, do not make stuff up. Cause they're going to say, wait a minute, your net worth is only 70,000. How are you averaging a hundred thousand dollars worth of trades? It doesn't make sense, but this is about 10% of your income. If you make about $50,000 a year, not including uh, you know, before taxes. So that's about reasonable. Again, this stuff has to make sense. When you come down here to the option trading level, just click that again. If you've taken a course or in the process of taking the course, go with limited or go with good. Okay. Cause you will be good by the time you're done with the course. So you want to be future thinking. You don't want to think, well, none right now, but I'm taking the course. No, by the time I get done with the course, I'll be good. Number of years, just say one because you're in the process of taking the course right now. You can't go 0.5. There is no decimal. So you can't say 0.5 years for five months. Okay. So you just want to go one year. Average trade per year, similar to your stock trade. And you may do a stock trade or you may do an option trade. So you're going to have 24, about two trades a month. Your average trade size has not changed. You're basically starting most likely with a $5,000 or so trading account. It's going to be a red flag if you come in here and say you're starting with $500. Yes, that's the truth, but you're working towards getting a $5,000 account. So you expect, you know, to get up to at least this is where you want to strive to be. So let's go with that number. Go ahead and hit next. Okay. Now it's going to say provide your consent to all terms and conditions. So you're going to click this box that says by checking this box, I announce the use of electronic records and signatures to open my account. All right. So you're going to electronically sign typically with the last four digits of your social security number. Go ahead and read all of that. Then by checking this a box, you indicate that you have chosen to have some or all of your documents delivered electronically. Go ahead and go green unless you're just a person who wants everything delivered by mail. But typically you're going to get everything delivered by email, your trade confirmations when you enter a trade, when you exit a trade, as well as your tax uh, information. OK, now scroll on down here. You're going to agree to their terms and conditions by checking this box. I acknowledge the understanding, acceptance and the receipt of electronic service agreement. So they're going to say you agree by cert, uh, electronically. If you don't, what can happen is they're going to have to fax you something or mail you something. You're going to have to sign it. You're going to have to fax it back. All of that is going to delay you opening your trading account. So go ahead and agree to sign electronically unless you just have some type of phobia about uh, signing up for stuff online. All right. After carefully reading the above definition, click on one of the boxes below. So let's go ahead and read this. Uh, please read the following and click one of the buttons register or qualify with the security and exchange commissions, the, the commodities, future trading commission, any state securities agency, and any securities exchange or associate or any commodities or future contracts market or association. This is basically asking you again, are you a broker, a dealer? Do you work there? Anything like that? Typically the answer is going to be no. Are you engaged as an investment advisor? So I am not an investment advisor. I am a stock and options trader who trades my own real money. And I share with you guys how the entire program works for entertainment and educational purposes. So I am not a broker, but if you are a registered licensed investment advisor, you are going to have to click 
based on the definition above, I certify that I am a professional. Okay. Um, if you are employed by a bank or other organization exempt from registration under federal and or state securities law to perform functions that will require him or her to be so registered or qualified if he or she were to perform such function for an organization not so exempt. If you work for a bank or something like that, uh, you need to check with your bank basically, okay? And then are you using the market data for a business, professional, or commercial purpose, okay? Typically that answer is going to be no. Based on the definition, I certify that I am a non-professional subscriber. So what this simply means is, let's say you are investing people's money. Are you signing up to Charles Schwab to get your quotes that you can give to your customers to say, hey, this is the time to buy and sell? Are you using Charles Schwab's market data to make investment decisions for people's whose account or money you are managing or um, anything that's dealing with your company for commercial purposes? If you are, then those are some examples of business or professional commercial purposes of why you're using this. Typically, again, that's going to be uh, no. Okay. Based on definition above, I certify that I am a non-professional subscriber. By checking this box, I acknowledge that I have read the and understand in a, in assent to and agree to comply with those terms and conditions. So click this. You can read the terms and conditions. It's basically saying... Don't lie, don't cheat, don't fraud, don't smuggle money, um, different things like that, all right? No, but please read them, go through it. You can go through their terms and conditions. We're just going high-level overview. Click this box, uh, that consent to enroll in Swab's margin feature. That's where we talked about um, borrowing money from the bank. There is a, you do pay, what, what's the word here? You do pay interest on that money that you borrow, uh, but it's very small in comparison to what you could potentially make with it if you know what you're doing. But again, only uh, agree to that if you have the self-control and the knowledge. If not, don't check that box and don't check margin. And you can always come back and apply for it once you get a little bit more experience, okay? By checking this box, I am applying for authorization to trade options. Yes, we do. We want to buy calls. We want to buy puts. And if you're like a level three or higher where you want to do covered calls, spreads, different things like that, uh, not covered calls. I think that was in this level one. But if you want to do spreads, iron condors, butterflies, so many advanced option concepts, you're going to, um, this is what we're checking based on the level we picked earlier. And then I consent to enroll in swaps, cash, feature, program, I am not sure what their cash feature program is, but you can read it here. The cash feature program is a service that offers the bank sweep feature, a cash feature to permit your uninvested cash, the free credit balance to earn income while you decide how those funds should be invested longer term. You understand that additional information about the cash feature program is available in the get cash statement. So basically this is saying, they'll pay you a little bit of interest if you have the money just sitting in there doing nothing. But again, make sure you read through it, see if you're open to that. And maybe um, you're also agreeing to allow them to use your money to act as a bank, which they, I guess, sort of are. Uh, and you, if you're okay with that, then check that box. If you're not, just leave it unchecked. Okay, so IRS, this is important. Have you been notified by the IRS that you are subject to backup withholding? So if you owe uh, backup withholding could be something like a lawsuit, meaning you haven't paid your, or something like you haven't paid your taxes. Maybe you have child support or something like that. You're going to have to say yes. If they find out and you say no, you could have your account garnished. So let's read this. Generally, backup withholding is not required, but this applies to certain clients who fail to certify their withholding status, incorrectly provide their taxpayer identification number, or fail to certify they are subject to backup withholding. Backup withholding applies when the IRS is aware that a client has underreported their income. If you choose yes, swab is required to backup withhold a percentage of your taxable income from dividends, interest, and gross proceeds and send 
withholding to IRS. So they're basically saying, we're going to hold some of your money and your profits and send it to the IRS for you uh, if you are subject to backup withholding. And, I, you know, and any of the other things I might have mentioned. And then this is a legal and binding document, okay? So by checking the I certify box in the highlighted panel below, you declare the following under penalties of perjury, okay? So this is a legal document. This isn't a game here. So make sure you're telling the truth, all right? Uh, the number shown on this application is my correct taxpayer identification number. I am not subject to backup withholding because... Uh, I am exempt or whatever the case may be. I am a U.S. citizen. And then number four, I am exempt from foreign account tax compliance. All right. And so, boom, you're going to check that. Now, here's the deal. I checked that and this is a legal document. So when I get down here, I will not be hitting submit. I'm just checking that for illustration purposes, but I will not be hitting submit. OK, now agree to the terms of contract. Just go ahead and read this, that if you uh, decide to sue them or arbitrate them, you're going to have to follow these um, instructions or directions. Go ahead and click that. And then the final step is to hit submit. Let me go back up here to the top. Once you hit submit, they're going to ask you, how do you want to fund your account? Do you want to mail them a check? Do you want to transfer money from a bank account? And on that page, you will be able to uh, basically pick how you want to fund your account. But because I made up all the information on this application, I do not want to submit this and for them to get an application with John Doe living on John Doe Enterprises. But this was just to walk you through how to open your first stock and options trading account. Congratulations. You are well on your way to learning how to have your money work hard for you instead of you always working hard for it. Okay. How you feeling? Excited? That's it. You know all the questions that you're going to get asked when you go to open your first trading account. So now you're equipped to begin this journey. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when I create new tutorials. Also, don't forget to check out my other video where I break down the stock market secrets that the big boys don't want you to know. You can see that video right here by clicking on the link and I'll see you on the next video.